Uh, so first, I welcome all of you to India um, in this, uh, in, say, Indian Smart Utility Week 2020. Uh, I have been told to uh, talk something about where, how, how we have done so far in the sector of the smart grid. Now, uh, so far as the high voltage transmission grid in India is concerned, we are fairly smart. Uh, of course, with the integration of the renewable energy and that too of the level of 175 gigawatt that we aim to reach by 2022. And again, uh, the Prime Minister has already raised the bar. Now it is 450 gigawatt by 2030. So integration of renewable is going to be a big task. A lot of challenges would be there. Technological solution has to be found out. Uh, that will affect not only the high voltage transmission grid, but also the, uh, say, distribution grid, low voltage means 11 kV and below. You know, in India, uh, we embarked on this journey 10 years back almost, uh, more than that. And we have now a national smart grid mission, uh, which is based in, uh, uh, say, say which, which, which is hosted by, uh, in the Power Grid Corporation of India. Separate uh, directorate is there. But uh, that the ministry has got the mission directly in the joint sector distribution. I had been there for almost four and a half years. Uh, we started with our RIPDRP project and we had some uh, small uh, smart grid uh, pilots. And we have run 10 uh, smart grid pilots in our country. One of them is with the IIT Kanpur. And that's not only the grid, but the smart city concepts also the pilot is going on. Uh, Almost all the pilots are now coming to conclusion. And uh, so we have a uh, good amount of experience and knowledge, uh, say, all our, or uh, we know our shortcomings, we know some direction towards which we have to improve upon. And uh, in the meantime, the country has felt that a smart metering particularly uh, <coughs> is the first step towards the smart gridding of the distribution network apart from, say, modernization uh, in the normal electrical equipments, which are not only, no, no longer the electrical equipment have the 25-year cycles. I mean, they all are mostly now contrived through some IT best activities, and the cycle have also, the life cycle has also reduced to seven, eight, nine years, 10 years, except for the bigger ones like transformer and things like that. So IT-enabled uh, electrical equipment is already in the circuits now, network now. And uh, uh, say renewable energy is there. Uh, so grid has to be made smart. And for that purpose, a smart meter has been taken as the, uh, say, say, as a very instrumental, uh, uh, say, intervention in that. Uh, India has already come out with some kind of uh, Indian standards. Uh, we have, uh, uh, say, a specification also given by the CEA for this purpose. BIS has given the Indian standards. Uh, we have some prototype, uh, uh, say, testing uh, facilities, almost six to eight in our country. Uh, but the size of requirement is too huge. India has almost 300 million, uh, sorry, not 300 million, I'm correct, 30 crore, 300 million uh, consumers. And uh, converting all of them to the smart meters and that to the country plans not more than five years for that purpose is a big job. Not only for the availability of the supply, but also for the manpower and the skill to say install them properly. Uh, the second point is our, uh, all our discoms are not financially very uh, sound. Some of them needs financial support also. And because they are not financially very strong, they do not want to invest upfront in the smart metering. Therefore, there are two ways. One way is that the government chips in and gives some financial support. But government would also not like to give 100% financial support. Ultimately, power is being uh, say, say managed on a commercial principles also. Those consumers who are using power must pay it and also. So, if a large amount of money goes in capex of, uh, say, 
capital formation, uh, capital expenditure for smart meters, the tariff is going to go up. So that again a question of affordability comes. And therefore, some business model has to be found out where the distribution companies do not have to invest upfront large amount of money. Uh, government may chip in for some amount of financial or transaction, say, say financing kind of thing, transition financing kind of thing. And it operates on an OPEX model. There are many such uh, models operating even where, where the uh, meter manufacturers are in, in, uh, chipping in, where, where the uh, financiers, meter managers are chipping in. Uh, UK has some model and then there are some uh, say, say data managers are also coming, data management systems are DMS are also coming kind of thing. Uh, we already have embarked upon, I mean, because under, uh, under IPDS, we had a scheme here, integrated power development scheme, and under that also something around um, uh, 800,000, 850,000 850, smart meters have been sanctioned to the different states. Uh, but then what we find that uh, uh, meters uh, on the EPC contract is available easily, but then meters with management system, very few bidders are coming or very few people are eager to experiment with many. Uh, the second thing is that it, once you install a smart meter in the system, uh, now, now a smooth integration of that and data flow uh, with the best of the, uh, say, say, the companies we have found, uh, there was many hiccups, which, uh, which uh, say, delays the project. Uh, many of them have already uh, improved also. Now things are happening. Uh, more than, I think, uh, more than one million uh, meters have already been uh, installed. So that is one of the aspect, affordability. The point I am saying, the affordability of the smart metering. Uh, the new business models, hmm. uh, say, uh, we, we may not need too uh, high-end, uh, say, say, very high-end uh, technology also in that. Our needs are limited. The another question is coming up, say, India, lot of, lot many rural consumers we have. I'm intentionally pointing out these things because that would facilitate a better di discussion among the, say, say, uh, uh, domain experts in the sector here. Say India, there is a debate going on that a smart metering, is it not a luxury for the power sector? Whereas large number of uh, consumer might not have been metered even today and flat rate tariff is there. So why should it be? But then uh, there is another aspect. The financial health of the discoms are not good because billing is not always regular. Collection is not always regular. If the default uh, consumers are there and their payment has not been, disconnection is not possible. Smart metering uh, really helps it. In rural area, the concentration of the consumer is also very less. And therefore, the transaction cost of billing, collection, and all those goes on. So if it is digital, in the digital form, uh, easily communicated and easily collected, then it can be done. So uh, the transaction cost uh, will be minimized even in rural areas. So even if your consumer is not a high-end consumer, he is a low-end consumer, uses not more than 100, 200 kilowatt hours a month, still you need a smart meter. But then affordability becomes question because our consumer who cannot use more than 200 uh, units or kilowatt hours a month will not be in a position to pay upfront a very large amount for the metering, new meters and things like that. So this kind of thing is, uh, is required. But at the same time, now large number of uh, schemes are running in our country with the, uh, say, decarbonization of the energy sector. Like uh, for farmers, we have a Kusume scheme where the government is chipping, giving some subsidy for, say, uh, renewable energy uh, uh, driven agri pumps. Similarly, rooftop solars are uh, in very uh, big demand nowadays because government is subsidizing that. So every consumer would be, uh, is becoming, a large number of consumer would be becoming prosumer and the uh, RE would be being, uh, uh, say, elect, uh, uh, integrated at the distribution level. I mean, you need to have a, a smart grid there. Otherwise, things will not happen. So smart metering is also required. Then demand-side response 
unless it is a two way communication with the consumer and the uh, say power uh, distributor uh, it's not possible and without a smart metering two way con communication is not possible so these are some of the aspect where more research is required in india uh, not because uh, basic technology is known to the uh, say the people researchers here the academics here as well as the say say the business uh, groups also who are in the business of uh, say developing uh, technology for the, the technology or the material uh, suppliers for the grade or for the metering and things like that but the point it has to be made affordable so affordability is one question the size is the requirement is so high and timeline for the implementation is so short so how to speed up the thing so a skill required for that large number of manpower is to be a skill and uh, similarly the data mining i mean the large amount of data now will be available with you when you go for the smart meters how to use those data to improve the performance of the power distribution company these are some of the issues which are very very important for our country and i wanted to uh, bring it on the table in advance because the domain experts when you people are interacting from both the sides i mean that can uh, you can you can find out solution for that or try to attempt uh, you can attempt to find out solution and uh, also there there could be an opportunity for the business uh, in say say uh, alliances between the two countries so that that's my idea to bring here thank you